So let's continue. We have proved, uh, we have defined Hoffel homology and homology of a K algebra with coefficients in by modules. We have defined it using bar resolution of A, and we have shown that uh, it has both of them have uh, homological interpretation. This one is is torn. Tor I N M and this one is X. M where phi is uh, a K algebra structure map. We have shown that if uh, A is flat, if A is flat, or k, then um, in fact the whole homology is x, a is store, our a, and if a is projective. Our key, then Hochschild cohomology is the usual x. So, in particular, if k is a field, so if we consider algebras our field, it's like very wide area in algebra, then we have both of these. So we don't need this uh, relative homological algebra theory. So the next, our paragraph is interpretations in small degrees. Multiverse. So we will give interpretation in degrees zero and one for in zero for homology and homology, in one for cohomology, and in some special case we will give an interpretation of the first homology too, and then but it will be another section. We'll give interpretation of HH2, uh, as in the case of groups, it will be uh, isomorphic to the set of equivalence classes of extensions of some type. So, and uh, finally we will give an application of this interpretation of the second Hochschild homology, and I think that it will be the end of our lectures. I hope to have time for this. So, theorem. Ah, first, some definitions. If we have an algebra A, algebra M is an A by module. Derivation from A to M is uh, uh, no, sorry, K derivation is a K linear map.
f from a to n such that uh, for any a b from a one has the Leibniz rule f of a b is equal to f of a b plus a f of b. So um, we denote by their k of a m the set of derivations from a to m. Then, <coughs> if for a from sorry for x from m, one can define a map phi x from a to m that sends a to the commutator of a index. And uh, one can show that for any x, phi x is a derivation. So, k linear, of course. Such derivations form um, a subspace of their k of m we denote by <coughs> either either of a m the set of such derivations then either A M is a subspace of dark A M elements of this subspace are called inner derivations. And as usually, <coughs> we can define order k of a m as the factor set, uh, factor space. And it is the set. Derivations. So, theorem. Let A be a K algebra. Algebra M is a by module, then the <coughs> zero Hochschild homology of A with coefficients in M are 
such x from m that x is equal to x a for any a and a. This set is, is called is denoted by m a. So in some sense, it is set of elements of m invariant under uh, a. And in particular, or in some sense, it is the center of M. In particular, Hoch homology of A, which is Hoch homology of A with coefficients in A, is uh, the center of A. Then the first Hochschild homology of A with coefficients in M is isomorphic to the set of outer derivations of A with coefficients in M. And finally, the Zero Hochschild homology of A, uh, Hochschild homology coefficient M, is the factor set of M by the set, by the subspace generated by AX minus XA for A in A, X in M. In some sense, it's abilization of M. It is um, not by M A. Um, like this in this is notation. So the proof is quite simple. We simply write down uh, the beginning of uh, C and of C star of A M and C star of A M and see that here we have what have the sequence M then this is this one is zero degrees then home a a to m here x goes to the map phi x exactly Because x corresponds to the map f from k to m, that sends 1 to x. Yes, so if you write delta f of, um, of a, yes, then it is by definition a f of 1 minus f of 1 a, which is exactly phi x of a. Yes, and here map f from a to m goes to the map uh, delta f defined by the equality delta f of a times rb is equal to a f of b minus 
Так, AMB, класс, всем класс. F of AB. Yes. So, first of all, X uh, from C0 of A M satisfies delta of X equals zero. If and only if phi x is zero, if and only if x lie in M A. So, <coughs> and uh, by definition, Hosh, zero Hosh homology is the kernel of this map. So, which is zero of A M is M A. Then F from A to M lies in the kernel. If and only if this guy is zero, yes. And so if and only if f of b equals to a f of a b plus a f of b. If and only if f is a k derivation. And uh, the class of f is zero is zero in H H one AM if and only if F is equal to phi X for some X and M. Hence, each one of AM is the set of all derivations. Well, and with Hochul homology and CZ2, we need only two terms. And it is simply uh, simply M, which is C zero K M and here A tends R M, which is C one. And this map sends A tends R X to <coughs> to x a minus a x mm -hmm. so we have that oh, uh, With high Hochul homology and homology situation is more complicated. Hochul homology we will interpret in some way. Uh, the second is minimum. The third, as always, can be interpreted as uh, abstractions or something. Um, depending. Like, in fact, uh, second Hochul homology has two interpretations. We'll consider one of them. Uh, there is interpretation of the second homology of A with coefficients in M, and uh, there are some special interpretations of homology of A with coefficients in A as deformations of A. Uh, but it's deformation theory, and we will not touch on it. So, for Hochschild homology, we'll give interpretation of the first homology only in the case of 
a community of K algebra. So what now? K B a commutative K algebra. And uh, <coughs> all modules that we will consider, all my modules, will be in fact modules of array. We will consider modules like right, for example, our A as by module. So, if M is uh, an A module, then we simply define um, AX as XA for X and M. And then, for such modules, our A, uh, f uh, like for commutative algebra and for modular array, uh, makes sense. Uh, limitation of course homology and homology. And, and make sense for commutative. Okay, and module, not by module, M over A. Moreover, in this case, um, Hochschild homology becomes not only K space, like in general, uh, Hochschild homology is simply K module. But in this case, uh, if you have two modules, uh, two modules over A, yes. M, M are modules over A, then M. N is a modular array. Where the multiplication is simply defined by the equality x tensor y a is equal to x tensor y a. Well, we of course can write uh, x tensor a y, a x tensor y, x a tensor y. This is the same. Um, in particular, h star of a m. is an A module. In the case where M is a modular array. Not by module. Because in the case of commutative algebra you can define non-commutative by modules. In this case, we don't have. Uh, we can't push off the A module structure. Definition. 
So let A be a commutative algebra. It is until the end of this section. And M is a modular array. Then we define... Uh, no, without M. Let A be a commutative algebra. We define modules of Kahler derivations. A that is denoted by omega AK as free module on the set DR DR J for A and A. So it is simply notation. Like for any A, we define some generator J. First relation is that d alpha is zero for alpha from k. So you know you remember that k algebra means that there is an f from k to a and uh, l uh, alpha in k means that alpha in the image of this map. Second d of x plus y equal to dx a plus b is equal to da plus db for all a b from a and third one is d of a b is equal to d of a b plus a d of b for a b This module of Kaffer derivations is uh, universal in the following sense. The map from A to Omega AK sending K to J is a K linear derivation moreover a map uh, we have to denote it by some Letter it's denoted by D. By D. It's a name of map. Moreover, for any derivation. from K to, uh, to an A module. M for any derivation F. There exists unique 
body from the set of ahomorphism. such that f is equal to phi d. Thus, d induces isomorphism here. Isomorphic to home our A from to M. So this model of partial derivations turns derivations to a model homomorphisms some sense because of course uh, if you have a derivation uh, if you have some uh, element from here some a homomorphism from omega a k to m phi then phi d is a derivation it's easy to check So uh, the additivity of D and the fact that it satisfies the equality uh, that is required for it to be duration are uh, simply Follow, uh, simply follow from the definition of Kahler module because uh, these uh, uh, qualities are relations. So it remains to check that it is k linear, but by definition of Kahler modules, we have d of a alpha plus. A d of alpha, and uh, this is zero because d of alpha is zero, so it is d of a alpha. Hence, uh, d is k linear derivation. Well, uh, so now what picture we have to deduce? If we have A, have some derivation, we have here D, which is derivation 2. We need to show that there exists unique phi here that makes this uh, diagram commute, and this phi is an A module map. But uh, we know that DA for A from A um, generate omega since DA for A from A generate omega. as an A module. And um, phi has to satisfy phi of dA 
has to be equal to f of a. If phi exists, it is unique. Well, uh, and uh, vice versa, we ha can define phi in such a way on generators. So this means that uh, for general element from omega, we define phi of t a times b as uh, f of a times b, of course. And uh, we need to then, uh, since if you consider the free module generated by J, then there is a unique map from this free module to M. So we only need to check that uh, phi sends uh, relations to zero in M. But uh, so phi of d alpha, yes. Phi of d alpha has to be equal to zero, yes. It is what is this f of alpha. Uh, yes. So we need to show that f of alpha is zero, but we know first that f of one times one is equal to um, f of one plus f of one, and hence f of one is zero. And by collinearity of f, f of alpha is equal to f of 1 times alpha equals to 0 for alpha from k. So this one is true. Then phi of uh, dA plus dB um, since phi is uh, homomorphism is equal to f of a plus f of b, so it equals to f of a plus b, so it equals to phi of d of a plus b. So this relation is satisfied too. Uh, and finally, phi of d of a b is equal to f of a b. It is equal to uh, f of a b plus a f of b. So it is phi d of a times b plus a phi d of b. And uh, since phi is, uh, uh, is an a module homomorphism, we have phi of d a b plus a d b as we need. So this lemma is proved. how it is related to Hochschild homology. It's related in the following way. Let A be a commutative K algebra. K algebra. A module, then 
the first homology of a coefficient in M is isomorphic to <coughs> omega AK tends our our A M. In particular, in particular, H one of A is isomorphic to the module of Kahler derivations, and it is a part of some important hero with theorem of homology that we won't consider. Uh, well, uh, so the proof. We need to write down the beginning of uh, complex uh, calculating HH1. It is A tensor A tensor M to A tensor M to M. So here, like A tensor B tensor X goes to B tensor um, XA minus AB tensor X plus a tensor bx and here a tensor x goes to x a minus a x and it is zero because uh, m is a modulo over a and this multiplication left and right multiplication inside so this map is zero and hence uh, the first homology of A with coefficients in M is simply A tensor M factor um, B tensor XA minus A B tensor X plus A tensor BX for all A, B and A, X and M. Now we define uh, it be sigma from uh, H one of A M to <coughs> to omega a k tensor m uh, by equality we would call it tensor x, the class of a tensor x goes to d a tensor x. Yes, and gamma from omega a k tensor over a m to h h1 a m by the equality d a tensor x goes to um, goes to a tensor x of course well in general it is d a times b tensor x but b can be 
moved to x. So if we have, have t a b tensor x, then of course we define it by uh, a tensor b x simply. And one can check that, uh, well, if one check that uh, sigma and gamma are well defined, then obviously they are mutually inverse. And one can check this. Check that sigma, gamma are well defined. Uh, and a module homomorphisms. That it is a module homomorphism is clear because well, you, when you multiply here by some b, you multiply simply x by some b and here too. So only way well defines one has to check and it's not very difficult. So now the almost last part of our lectures uh, about singular extensions. Singular extensions. They're called Hochschild extensions. So, what is a Hochschild extension? Let A be the always a K algebra, not commutative anymore. M be a a by module then <coughs> a singular extension of A by M is uh, an algebra, k-algebra. Homomorphism. Epsilon from E to A. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, Surjective the algebra homomorphism such that kernel of epsilon is a square zero ideal, and in this case, if kernel of epsilon is a square zero ideal, then uh, kernel of epsilon is a bimodular array. Yes, because, well, first of all, k of epsilon is a bimodular over E, but if we have this equality, this means that elements of the kernel of epsilon annihilate kernel of epsilon, so uh, E by module structure induces A by module structure. It's A by module. If um, A by module isomorphism this will be phi from A to 
the kernel of epsilon. So it is square zero, zero extension of A or single extension uh, such that uh, as an A by module uh, the kernel is isomorphic to M. Such an extension, a single extension, of A by M induces short exact sequence of K modules M E A where this guy is uh, epsilon, it is K algebra homomorphism. Mm. And this extension extension is called Hochschild extension if this short exact sequence splits over k and uh, uh, to uh, extension uh, like uh, you see that uh, extension determines uh, short exact sequence short exact sequence of course determines extension so to uh, singular extensions corresponding to two short exact sequences m e1 a and m e2 a are called equivalent If there exists gamma from E1 to E2 isomorphism, it is automatically isomorphism, of course, of K algebras such that. Uh -huh. This diagram commutes well, nothing new. So, if K is a field, then of course, uh, Hochschild extension and singular extension is the same thing because our field, any short exact sequence splits, and we will apply Hochschild homology to study uh, extensions of our field. So, but uh, for now, K can be any <coughs> community frame, but we need uh, this uh, this condition that 
the sequence splits the sequence of k modules. So if um, m e a is a Hochschild extension, then we can choose the splitting sigma from A to E <coughs> that uh, induces isomorphism. E is isomorphic to M plus A of the K module. Uh, then uh, the multiplication of E corresponds here to the following multiplication. This isomorphism becomes K algebra isomorphism if we define the K algebra multiplication. on M plus A by the equality X A times Y B is equal to xb plus ay plus f of ab ab well f of ab simply sigma of a Usually, f of a b measures uh, the difference between uh, sigma b uh, map, uh, arbitrary map, and sigma b uh, k algebra map. So, if sigma can be chosen a algebra map, then of course f can be chosen zero, and you will get uh, what is called semi direct product of a and m. So, now Now what? So we get that any uh, Hochschild extension of M by of A by M is isomorphic to the extension M here as before E with A M F A well, this guy is, of course, 
A plus M is. K module as a K module and has multiplication defined by this formula. Nothing new. Uh, and this map, of course, uh, simply injection of M to the lyric sum and projection to A. Ah, for some, of course, for some, for some bilinear map from A uh, times A to M, but you know that it is can be interpreted as a map from A to the right to M, yes, uh, for some F. Linear. So we know that any single extension is of this form, but uh, the question is when a map f from a to the right to m defines a single extension, it determines a single extension, and uh, as before. The answer is if and only if f is an what's called is a Tuka cycle. So, uh, like uh, from here, you see that f is an element of C two of A M. Yes. You know, this multiplication by star. Well, so star term defines a K algebra structure. On A plus M, M plus A. So to check that uh, it defines a K algebra structure, of course, we need to check that um, um, what we need to check? Uh, well, we, we need to check. Uh, well, um, in fact, we need to check that uh, it has unit, and we need to check that it is associative. Um, but uh, in fact, we could um, choose sigma sending one to one as before and then f would be a, a normalized cycle but uh, that's okay uh, so the proof is a little more complicated if we don't assume this uh, condition but uh, in any case Defines an electric structure on M plus A if and only if, and here the equality A F of B C minus F of A B C plus F of A B C minus f of a, b, c is equal to zero for any a, b, c from a. And this quality is equivalent to the quality delta f equals to zero if you consider f as an element of c2 of a m, yes. 
And uh, as before, if uh, two extensions are equivalent, like the extension AMF and AMF prime, then in fact they correspond uh, to different choices of sigma for the same extension. So to get another extension, to get an extension equivalent to um, an extension, of course, a m f prime equivalent to AMF we have to choose another case splitting sigma Now we can see uh, sigma prime from A to E. Yes. And what can be the difference between sigma and sigma prime? In this case, so it has to be splitting of this <coughs> sequence, so it has to satisfy the equality that if we go here and here it is identity on A, so like epsilon sigma prime has to be identity, epsilon sigma is identity, so uh, the difference between sigma and sigma prime has to be an element of M. Then sigma prime of A Okay, is equal to sigma of a plus gamma of a for some gamma collinear map from a to m. Yes. Then we can calculate the difference between f and f prime. So we have we have f prime of a b. It's what it's sigma prime of A, sigma prime of B minus sigma prime of AB. So it is sigma of A plus gamma of A. Then here, sorry, uh, sigma of B plus gamma of B. Sigma minus sigma of a b plus gamma of a b. So the product of this is, is and this is zero because uh, they both lie on m and m is a square zero ideal. Like the product of sigma of a and gamma of b is of course simply a times gamma of b where, uh, where this multiplication is <coughs> a modal structure on m. So if we open the bracket we'll get f of a b plus a gamma of b plus gamma of a b minus gamma of a b and this guy is simply delta gamma of a b. So
so is before we get to the classification theory. Classes. Oof. Oh, shoot. Extensions. Oof. A by M. R. In one to one correspondence with the second Hochschild homology. And of course, under this correspondence. Zero class. Corresponds. To the semi direct product extension. M, M, A. <coughs> we haven't defined what is symmetric product extension, but it's clear from this theorem. Uh, well, if A is an algebra and M is a, an A by module, then symmetric product extension is simply the set M plus A with the multiplication x a times y b is equal to x b plus a y a b. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, the condition that m is an a by module is equivalent to the condition that uh, such a formula defines a um, a K algebra structure M plus A. Yes. If you check when uh, this uh, uh, <coughs> this formula defines uh, an associative algebra, you will get the condition A X B is equal to a x b that is the difference between uh, a by module and uh, two sided module between uh, by module structure and uh, two a module structures on different sides Well, so we have proved this theorem, uh, and it, it is very similar to the theorem that we have proved for groups. But now we can apply this theorem to uh, the ring theory, yes, to the classification of K algebras. Let's 
called Cation to, to K algebra theory. So from now on, A is an algebra, is a K algebra. K is a field. Uh, some part that I uh, will give now doesn't depend on this, but in final we want to apply to this case. Then we define so-called quasi-free algebra. Uh, what is called two friend dimensional uh, K-algebra theorem theory. Uh, definition A is a K-algebra or field K. A is called quasi three. If for any singular extension M E T of T by M. So T is in K algebra and M is a T module. And then K algebra homomorphism new from A to T. So here right, T, here right, epsilon, here new. There exists A K algebra map Phi from A to E such that epsilon is equal to uh, sorry uh, nu is equal to epsilon phi. So there exists map phi here that makes this triangle commute. Well, um, so mm, now we show that uh, quasi-free algebra satisfies the fact uh, um, more than this some generation of this condition. So if A is quasi three, then for any K algebra E and any nilpotent Ideal I of E, two sided ideal, of course. Um, there exists uh, and then uh, K algebra map new from A to E factor I there exists K algebra map
new tilde from A to E such that this map new is equal to pi new tilde where pi is the canonical projection of course. So the condition, by definition, quasi-free algebra is an algebra such that if you have uh, E, you have uh, I square zero ideal, then uh, any map from A to E factor I can be lifted to a map from A to E. Yes, it is definition. Of quasi free algebra. And uh, we want to prove uh, more general condition that if you have I of E take the projection and you have a map from A to this projection, then there is a map here. But now I is an important idea. So square zero, of course, uh, a particular case. Well, it's not very difficult, of course. We simply use induction for pi by i by, um, by induction on k on m we show that there exists New M from A to E factor I and the F power mm, K ultra map such that uh, this diagram commutes. base case for m equals 1 we simply take um, we simply take mu 1 equals mu and of course everything is okay so for uh, suppose that we have a map mu m Then we want to define new m plus 1 in such a way that this diagram commutes. Yes. And here Here you, of course, have the kernel uh, i in the nth power factor, i in the n plus 1 power, yes. And this one is square zero ideal. Since uh, this 
guy square is i to n power factor i plus one, which is zero because uh, because to m more equal to m plus one. Yes. Suppose that we have this and m more equal to one, of course. So we have new m plus one by definition of square of the algebra. M plus one by definition. Well, uh, so uh, what? So what? What? Uh, there exists m such that i in the nth power is zero by the definition of an important ideal. Hence, we have a map uh, from a to e factor i in the nth power such that uh, this guy commutes, but this guy is simply e because in the nth power is zero. So the proof is over. Now we will show that to check that algebra is quasi three, we don't need to uh, check the condition for all extensions, square zero extensions, but only for some special square zero extensions. Suppose that we have an algebra A. It is quasi three. If and only if H H two A M zero for any A by module. Of course, if uh, we didn't assume that K is a field, uh, we need to define quasi-free algebra, uh, adding not uh, square zero extensions, not considering only singular extensions, but uh, Hochschild extensions. And here, uh, and uh, in the lemma, the condition will be uh, that uh, we can lift if I is nilpotent and uh, the map from E to E factor I splits our K and so on. Uh, but for simplicity, we consider our, uh, our field. So this condition is equivalent to the condition that any square zero, ex uh, square zero extension of A by M uh, is isomorphic to the semi direct product extension. So in one direction, it is obvious, yes. If uh, A is quasi three, then uh, this guy is zero, because for any uh, square uh, singular extension, M E A, we can consider the, map, the identical map here. And there exists uh, sigma K algebra map such that uh, epsilon sigma is identity and hence P is uh, the semi direct product.
Well, and uh, in another direction, we of course, it's a little more complicated. Suppose that we have some. Suppose that uh, this guy is zero. Yes. Suppose that we have some singular extension m p t singular extension. And we have some map nu here, which is a map of algebras. Then we can form a pullback of nu and epsilon by p, where p is, of course, uh, what it is. Uh, the set of such E A from E times A uh, such that um, epsilon of E is equal to nu of A. Yes. So P is an algebra, of course, because uh, the one can check that if we multiply two such elements, uh, two elements from here, we get an element from here. And uh, this map is surjective algebra homomorphism, and uh, the kernel is M, and so on. And hence, uh, we get splitting, uh, since, since um, H2 of Am is zero. P is a semi direct product. This is the semi direct product. And there exists that be epsilon prime. Here be gamma. Then uh, symmetric product, and there exists K algebra map sigma from A P such that epsilon prime sigma is identity on A. Then of course, uh, one can show that epsilon gamma sigma is equal to nu. We have shown something similar. It's not very difficult. It's not uh, super obvious, but if you write down everything, you will see that it's true. And so we are done because uh, gamma is a uh, K algebra map, epsilon is a K algebra map, and sigma is a K algebra map. So the composition is K algebra map. <coughs> well, okay, so we have finished some part. Yes. So one corollary that we will finish today. Corollary. If H H two of A M is zero for any by module A by module M then uh, for any k algebra e and any uh, nilpotent ideal 
I N E. Such that E factor I is isomorphic to A, one has algebra map from e factor i to, <coughs> to e splitting the canonical projection So this is simply combination of our lemma and theorem. Or lemma and lemma of two lemmas, yes. So yes, the second homology is zero, A is quasi free, as A is quasi free, then the identical map from A to E factor I splits uh, and so on. Uh, for identical map from for this isomorphism from A to E factor I, there exists a map to E such that composition is what we need, and we can cancel this isomorphism. Um, so, in particular, uh, E is uh, a semi direct product of A and I, but uh, if I is not square zero, then we don't have uh, some fixed A, module, A by model structure on it. Yes. But we have because we have uh, what it's called um, a splitting. So the splitting gives a, an A by module structure on I, of course, because uh, I is an uh, E module, yes, e, e by module, and uh, so A is a subalgebra of E. It is A by module, but uh, this A by module structure depends on the <coughs> on the splitting that we choose. But in any case, in some way. Uh, it is a, a semi-direct product of A uh, and the ideal, the nilpotent ideal. So we will apply this uh, on Wednesday to uh, show, uh, to prove the Weidenberg Marcy theorem that um, in good cases uh, any finite dimensional algebra our field is a uh, semi-direct product of nilpotent ideal and semi-simple part. <coughs>